160. He's gone. What's up, everybody? Welcome to part five or whatever the fuck of the Super Ski Boat build. And for those of you who have watched previous episodes, know that uh, we finally got the boat done last weekend. Me and my buddy Josh took her out on the lake, and it was perfect for about 30 minutes. At which point, the transmission started to slip, and our day was done. So today we will be pulling the transmission and rebuilding it. So let's take a look real quick at what we got going on back here. So here is what this looks like from the back side. And so basically you got your big ass engine, teeny tiny little one speed, uh, or I guess two speeds technically, right forward and reverse, two speed transmission and a little drive shaft that runs through the hull. So our plan for today at least is just to get this transmission out of here. And, uh, but before we can do that, there's a few things we really gotta mark off. We gotta mark off where uh, the transmission uh, mounts to the drive shaft so we can put it back together and it'll be balanced. Take a look and measure all of the angles. So the engine angle, the transmission angle, and the drive shaft angle in order to make sure again we put everything back the way it's supposed to be. And then hopefully this weekend when the parts come in, we will do a full transmission rebuild on this. I'm also going to replace the uh, transmission oil cooler. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad from what I understand because like I said, there's not a whole lot of stuff inside this transmission. But uh, those are usually famous last words. So to take measurements, we're going to use this. I got this for five bucks from Harbor Freight. It's just a basic magnetic angle finder. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on this rib of the transmission and find out what the transmission angle is in relation to, to flat ground. I would say 19 degrees. The drive shaft we measure down here against this nut. The drive shaft is sitting at 11 degrees. So write that down. That looks like about 11 degrees as well. So now that we have those measurements in place, uh, next thing we gotta do is pull out all the old transmission fluid, which literally has about 20 minutes on it. And then we can take a look at it and hopefully it will be able to tell us, uh, give us at least a better indication of what failed. Because to me it looks like pink clean transmission fluid, but uh, never know. And again, to clean out the transmission, we're going to use our little vacuum guy here. So science time. I took out approximately 1.8, just under 2 quarts, and I personally put in 2 quarts. And so I would say that we didn't have a significant transmission fluid loss anywhere. It's basically on point. However, <clears throat> the color of the transmission fluid, this <coughs> is the transmission fluid we took out of the transmission. And you can see it's got a, a milkiness to it, which usually indicates a mixture with water. This is brand new Dextron out of the bottle transmission fluid. And you can see it is, it's kind of that cherry pink. Whereas this is kind of that murkier, nastier, and I mean, you can feel that, you know, if you touch these two, this is definitely a lot runnier. So my guess is the real problem is just the fucking uh, transmission cooler that leaks a bunch of water from the lake into my transmission, but we're going to rebuild the whole thing anyway. Now comes the fun part of actually removing the transmission. And as you can see, because it's a boat, it's actually not that bad to get to. Assuming the bell housing doesn't have too many bolts on the underside and I'm kind of hoping I don't have to remove the bell housing either But we may have to if we want to replace our flex plate and uh, As far as that's concerned, we'll just have to get there when we get there But the goal right now is to remove the transmission. So I'm gonna go for uh, the easy pickings first and we're gonna disconnect the drive shaft There's those bolts out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop the starter off real quick. It's just two uh, two bolts that hold it in, and so we'll take that off and just kind of push it out of the way so it's kind of out of the way of the transmission. Again, easy stuff first. Shifter linkage, forward and reverse comes off next, uh, followed by the mounting bracket bolt down there. Next step was take off the uh, nuts that go on top of these trans mounts. 
getting these hoses undone around the uh, transmission cooler. So there we go. We disconnected the upper line <clears throat> and the lower line and undid the bolt that goes through the uh, bell housing that holds it on because the one that actually holds the, the uh, cooler was stripped. Uh, and so this whole assembly actually is just bolted to the transmission by uh, coolant lines. And so it'll just come out entirely with the transmission. A few smacks with Mr. Uh, Sledgy Sledge. And you can just slide the uh, whole prop shaft backwards away from the transmission. At this point, next thing we got to take care of is uh, the transmission neutral sensor right here. These two uh, terminals got to come off. Next, we remove the upper trans bolt that was right here and set it aside. So I took this out, this is the bottom driver's side bolt. It's way down underneath here, it's a huge pain in the ass to get to. You're gonna need an extension uh, like this. And it, all these bolts are 5 8 inch. Next, I took an equally annoying bolt out of there, which is the uh, passenger side bottom. So remember these guys where we took the nuts off? Well, these are actually just wedge bolts. And so what you want to do is you want to just get a hammer uh, and an extension or a punch or something and just kind of tap them until they're kind of down in this position. And what they do is they actually center the transmission uh, in relation to this axis. Uh, and so once they're down, they're basically wedged out. Now, the next part is the hardest part and the least fun part and definitely sucks ass. And that is removing these four bolts. So there's one on top, one on the bottom, one on top, one on the bottom. The top ones I'm going to see if I can get an impact on from the side, but the bottom ones uh, we're just going to have to muscle out and that's not going to be fun. But be careful because once you remove those bolts, the transmission literally should just drop out. Finally, the two passenger side engine mount bolts come out because this bracket faces the other direction. The bottom one is a nightmare to remove. You need a really short socket, a little tiny extension, and a really fine toothed uh, ratchet obviously after you break it loose but it's, it's just a pain in the ass well transmission is out pain in the fucking ass you gotta lift the engine in the back to get enough clearance to pull it out and we broke the flex plate so I have to replace that <laughs>